How many of you guys out there use Facebook? Just a show of hands real quick, okay. WeChat users, come on, get them up there, all right. Moments, does anybody check moments on WeChat? Yeah, I'm sure we're posting some right now. How about Instagram? Who's an Instagram junkie? I love Instagram. I've just started to really love it. So I'm here to talk to you today about social networks and how you can turn them into networks of interest and leverage them to serve you better. And how, without even knowing it, they actually are leveraging or impacting your profile in the world. Now I work here at NIS as the tech director and one of my jobs is to talk with parents, students, teachers, and our community members about how social networks, social media in particular work. I feel a lot of questions about this. And one of the big ones is of course talking about, oh, who can view my profile out there? How is it gonna negatively impact my social profile when I'm applying for universities and things? And that negative piece is always in there. And usually I try to start off with sort of alleviating that fear and talking about an example of how it doesn't really matter. How even back in 1996, 1997, when I was a 17 year old IB student in Moscow, I happened to go out to a nightclub and by accident, purely by chance, there happened to be uh, a news crew there doing an expose on this nightclub. It happened to be one of the most notorious ones at the time, run by the Russian mafia, and it was called the Hungry Duck. And we were told expressly by our teachers, by our parents, it's off limits, especially to teenagers. Well, of course, when a teenager hears that, what do we want to do? We want to go explore and see, see it for ourselves. Unfortunately, this news crew was there that night. Somebody back home was watching, one of the parents of another student, and of course, it got back, and my parents happened to ask me, so how was that uh, party over at so-and-so's house? Full well knowing that I was out at this club. <laughs> Needless to say, I got caught. Um, in sort of the same format as students today get caught when things are posted about them and they're tagged online. And this is a video that I pulled off of one of my former students' uh, Facebook feeds, and he had graduated, was in UBC, was not even a privy to this activity going on. And the activity in the background was actually several of his friends going around to purchase some illicit uh, substances, shall we say. And they just happened to tag him. He wasn't even there. Now, these students that tagged him were actually students in the school that I was teaching in at the time. It showed up on my Facebook feed because he was a friend of mine. I had friended him after helping him getting into UBC and everything. And so I sent him a quick message and said, hey, listen, you might want to tell your buddies to check what they're tagging and what they're posting because it's showing up on my feed as well. So this is a lot of what I talk about. And university students, do we have any university students out there or university hopefuls? A couple? Okay, good. So Kaplan, uh, which is a university test prep program in the U.S., did a survey last year and the year before last. And they found around 35% of college admissions officers actually do look at their applicants' social media profiles, whether it be Facebook, whether it be Instagram, if they're coming from China, WeChat, you know they're getting involved in that now as well. And they found that out of that 35%, 42% found a negative impact after viewing the social media of their applicants. For example, there was a student who basically had a fantastic application. She had a fantastic essay. She was involved in all the right clubs. She was very active in her community for all intents and purposes. This college admissions officer read her social profile and found some not so nice language. It wasn't quite racist, but it was enough to demonstrate that she really had kind of a cluelessness about the world uh, that you wouldn't expect from somebody who was so well-rounded on her application. Needless to say, they rescinded that app, that, uh, her admission and she didn't get in. 50% actually had a positive impact. For example, a girl, again, forgot to mention in her college application that she had facilitated a gay rights panel at her school and was very active in, in trying to generate some positive discussion about gay rights in her school. She forgot to mention in her essay. 
the school turned around and said, hey, listen, this is the kind of activity that we want to see. This is an active student really trying to promote positivity in her community. So they actually did, it did turn, it turned the page on her profile and they offered her an acceptance. Now, it's not just about college applicants. Do we have anybody that's looking for a job or just recently looked for a job out there? Okay, a couple, all right. And if you are gonna be looking for a job soon, you need to take notice because this is the percent of active candidates on Facebook right now, okay? Compared that to Twitter, which is supposed to be kind of a professional profile, and LinkedIn, which is definitely a prof professional uh, social media platform, right? 83% of active candidates on Facebook right now. Facebook took notice, and they've actually opened it up to uh, job recruiters and said, hey, listen, if you have a business Facebook page, we'll let you put your application on there, and we'll facilitate the ability for you to do your entire application and interview process through Facebook. That just happened last year. So they've taken notice. Now, I know I'm talking about Facebook, Twitter, things that don't actually exist, per se, behind the wall. We go look down the list. WeChat doesn't even show up until number five. So these are some of the top social media platforms that are out there that are being actively used at this very moment. On top of that, I did a little bit of research, as much as I could, uh, behind the wall, and we find that how many DD users are out there? Some of you guys probably came here with a DD, right? So DD actively uses it and has found that two in three job seekers use social media right here in China. The rest of the information is not so clear, okay? But that's just because it's constantly changing here in China. Right now, there is a huge surge in a brand new Chinese developed and uh, built platform called MyMy. It's the fastest growing platform for social media and jobs here in China, okay? Recruiters, does anybody own a job or running a job and looking for some job applicants out there? Maybe, yeah, a couple, all right? So you guys need to, if you're not using these two services right now, you should start looking because job recruiters are starting to leverage this as well. Platforms like Entelo and Talentbin use their search tools to consider the experience and history mentioned in their users' profiles. And not only that, but how they use their social profile. If you are applying for a job in the tech industry, it's gonna look through your social profile. How often do you tw tweet about technology? How often have you generated a series of retweets about technology? These are the things it measures, and for you as a recruiter, that is really valuable information to let you know just how active that person is gonna be in your organization. So, I'm here to tell you it's not too late to take control, okay? It's time for you to jump in there, if you haven't already, and start crafting your social network into your network of interest. I'm gonna give you three things today, plus one, just because four is an unlucky number here in China, to take away with you. Number one, work on your digital CV right now. Resumes, cover letters, all those things, they're starting to become a thing of the past. We were just talking about it with our grade 11 students the other day. We're crafting their resumes and we're gonna take those and then we're gonna digitize them because that is where those first impressions happen nowadays. Job Zoo, Visualize Me, Resume Up. These are three places you can go right now where you can go take your current resume and have it digitized. Not just digitized in terms of having it turned into a uh, a document that's online somewhere. But it will actually take your resume and turn it into an infographic that pinpoints and highlights the highlights of your career, your achievements, your awards to date in a really beautiful and visual way. The things that, the sort of things that a recruiter out there is gonna look for today, all right? Next, make sure that your digital profile is set up so that it does the talking. You don't have to go into an interview anymore and say, yeah, I am the best programmer in the world. You can ask me anything and I can program it for you. No, instead, let your digital profile talk and let all those comments that people say, hey, thanks for that code you wrote the other day. It really saved my bum, right? 
thanks for uh, helping me develop that workaround in Word, Microsoft Word or whatever. All right? Let those comments speak for you because they speak louder than you can and ever will. Also, let your passion through because, again, like I said before, this is from Forbes. Businesses are looking for people passionate about what they're doing, all right, and bringing that passion to their work. And the third one is show, don't tell. Develop your personality, your brand, and let that show through. Your online profile is an opportunity to demonstrate who you are. Remember the comment I made about the uh, young student who had started the gay rights panel in her school? Right? Let that demonstrate that you are active, you are principled, right? That's what you want to show in any sort of job interview. And finally, as you do these things, it's going to open up doors that you never even thought of before. Take, for example, another uh, student in the Kaplan survey that a college admissions officer talked about, and basically she had never even thought of starting an MBA program, a Master's of Business Administration, she had just wanted to help her mom get started with a baking business, and so she did all the legwork for a web design, for a website. That college turned around and actually said, hey, listen, you know, we can give you the skills and, and knowledge you need to become an entrepreneur and not just a web designer. So those doors are going to open as you curate and prune the, the hedge of your social network. Start building your social network today. Take the time, go through it, craft it in a way that you want. Thank you.